Anybody else with a question? I have a question about uh, when you're starting from scratch with design. This is all basically <laughs> once the room is pretty much done and then you're trying to figure out what you still need to work with. Mm -hmm. When you're starting from scratch, basically you're dealing with modeling then, right? Like yeah. there's nothing like this you're going to do as you're going along until you're pretty much done. That's a whole panel that we aren't really yeah. Well, you, you might want to make noise tests in the beginning. As the you're building. going. Well, just at the, the raw building. You, you need to oh, know yeah. what... Background is going to resonate. Yeah. 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 But, but most of us are going to be designing rooms that aren't going to have reflection problems. So we don't have to go and test to make sure that we don't have console reflection. We're yeah. taking care of that. Okay. RPG yeah. makes a product. Now, if you're starting from scratch, which which typically we do, you got a big open building or even an outdoor area and you're starting to build, there's uh, relationships between height, width, and depth that mm -hmm. will give you, you have something to show for I'm hoping I do. Yeah. Um, this is a Mac, so I don't know. There that is. will show um, how, to, how to get um, <coughs> the best low frequency response in just a, a regular enclosure. It makes it a little easier to treat it that way. Um, this is a great program, guys. I'm going to let Jeff demonstrate. <clears throat> Actually, can you, can you pull and then the once you have that enclosure, height, width, and depth, then you can take it from there with the, the base control and mid-range diffusion, etc. I really like this program. I used to, now, i got to tell you, I used to do this by hand, and it would take me, Wes was laughing today, because sometimes it would take me two to three weeks, because you have to calculate mm -hmm. the harmonic structure of each dimension. So and when they iterations there, he had to do one at a time. Yeah, that, that yeah. <laughs> computer. Oh Jesus Christ! Let's fix that. The computer just did six hundred iterations of different room dimensions. So poor. Six hundred or more than that. Six hundred, as it looks like. So poor Chris was there doing calculations for three days to get like you know fifty. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, and the funny thing is you get it just about right, and then one harmonic collides right where you don't want it. you got to go back. Then you move that dimension, and it changes and interacts with another dimension. So these computer programs are absolute lifesavers. That's why God gave us computers. Jeff, really explain this. The, what the room sizer does is it uses uh, an iterative uh, sequence uh, to um, they call... Um, it's a downward iteration that tries different uh, room dimensions, width, length, and height. It tries it, it, it compares it against a metric that you've, that's already really programmed into it, but that you can set where you want, where you would like the room to be. And uh, it smartly, smartly takes that and says, all right, that one wasn't so good. I'm going to go this direction and try this way. And so what it's really good at doing is starting from scratch, saying you have, you've got a space that you say, you know, I think I want the control room to be about 18 feet long by 16 feet wide by 10 feet tall or something. And that's how much maximum room you have. But maybe you're willing to let it be, you know, 17 by 14 by 9. So you plug in a minimum. I don't want my room any smaller than this. And you plug in a maximum. This is as big as I can make it. And this program will actually find really good uh, height, width, uh, length, dimensions, uh, ratios for you. Um, there's a lot of ways to, like these guys were saying, a lot of people have done this by scratch with spreadsheets and there's, there's a lot of published ratios out there. There's a lot of research on, on room uh, dimensions. The, the problem with, um, with a lot of them, what you have to be careful for is, is uh, those ratios, there is no golden ratio. It, it, there, it doesn't exist because that ratio, that golden ratio changes when the volume of the room changes. So you might find the golden ratio for a room that's 16 by 12 by 8, but that's not the golden ratio for a room that's 18 by 15 by 10. That has a different uh, optimum ratio. And there's ways of, there's ways of, uh, of finding that. This is just an easy way. Um, and so what you get is it gives you all of the, it basically shows you everything that it's done, um, and it shows you uh, the worst value that it happened to find, and then the best value that it happened to find. Um, and it gives you, really all it does is it just gives you a good place to start because there's a lot of work from that to, to do, but it gives you kind of a, a way to start with a pretty good footprint of the room. Explain the coincidences there. Is that what, that's what it's showing you is what frequencies are kind of landing on top of each other? What, is, what are those? The numbers on the top are the, um, those are the modes. Yeah, so the, mode. the, the mm -hmm. very first one that says, it says, looks like 100. What that is is that's um, axial, tangential, and First, there's a three dimension. It's, it's your longest. Yeah, your longest. One hundred is just the length. The zero one zero will be the width of the room. 
and the zero, zero, 001 will be the height of the room. Yeah. And, and then you have one, one, one zero is a that. tangent. One means that it's the first, that's the fundamental. Mm -hmm. So that you can see from the length of the room, that, and, and that's just showing you where all of those land. So you have, you can see where all of the different combinations land. And also the, where you have several numbers, it means that, where there's two numbers, it means that it travels between four walls. Where there are three numbers, it actually bounces on all surfaces in your room. I have one other question because I have run a few of these and stuff. Uh, I haven't run this one. I like that. Uh, what happens when you start putting more than, you know, like these are all based on a rectangle or a square. What happens when you start doing that? All this goes kind of out the window. Of course, that's are off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well, what, what that requires, <laughs> real quick, what that requires, what this is doing is this is taking the wave equation and it's actually it's calculating. The, this is You can compare this to real room measurements. And and they nearly overlay perfectly. It's I did a, it's that. It's a real. I, I I reviewed your software, the RPG software for Mix Magazine, ten years ago. Yeah, I read that. Okay. And it was it was dead on. It if was we really look at the, this window, you see it says listener and loudspeaker. If you were to, uh, um, the conditions where this software will give you a perfect overlay with this response is when you place the loudspeaker in the lower <coughs> corner and the microphone up in the diagonal top corner. That's when you excite all the modes in the room and you pick them up perfectly. That's, I just wanted to explain. That's it. what it's modeled. That's that's what I could just modeled. make one, I just want to make one comment about this. I use this software a lot and I think it's great. It's one of the greatest pieces of software ever written, but it does not think for you. No. And you can't just otherwise. There would just be they wouldn't bother putting out the software. They say, "Well, here's the perfect room. Go build it," mm -hmm. um, because you have to be careful. It will. The computer will. If you give it some criteria, say, "I want to build," it, it allows you to put in certain constraints. Let's say the speakers must be against the front wall for some reason. You can say that, or you can say, mm -hmm. "No, no constraints. You just tell me with this room, you know, what to do." But let's say you you give it constraints, it can come back with a worst case, best case scenario like that, and say, well, the best case is with you sitting, uh, you know, 49% of the way between the front and the back wall, which is dangerously close to 50%. And 50% is awful. And the computer doesn't really distinguish <coughs> there, okay? Well, I would never place the listener there because when you lean up this much, now you're in. The computer is, is a great tool used in combination with your own common sense yeah. and experience. Intuition. Does everybody understand what we're talking about when we talk about your initial... There might be some people that, that don't understand the whole idea of the tonic frequency and the harmonics of each of these dimensions and, and how they interact with each other as the frequency rises. Does anybody need a better explanation of that? When you said tonic, is that... Fundamental. The, the fundamental. fundamental. The root. Tonic, that's like a musical thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. The, the root frequency, the lowest... Uh, frequency of that particular dimension. You take back. half the speed of sound and divide it by the, let's say, half the speed of sound is 565, okay, divide it by 20 feet, let's say here, that's going to give you the frequency. It's going to be about 25 hertz or so. Um, that's going to be the fundamental frequency for this mode. It might, might be closer to 20 hertz here because we're a little deeper. And then you're going to get harmonics at all the natural numbers of that. So you're going to get 25 hertz, 50, 75, 100. And Understood. I just didn't know if tonic was something I hadn't heard of. No. Tonic uh, it goes it's well with gin. gin as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. ah, I felt that coming from Fran. <laughs> Are there naturally occurring subharmonics? I mean, that's the thing. I always wonder about that. No, no. if you have <laughs> 25 hertz in that situation, yeah. that's the only tone. You right. won't hear. You won't start to hear 50 and you know right. those harmonics. It's only that one. Which is why you don't want to have a room that gives you that's twenty by ten because ten's mm. tonic is going to be fifty right. roughly and yes yeah. even multiple is always bad yeah yeah and that's where you get huge suckouts or augmentations of frequencies yeah yeah so you walk through some rooms you go wow it's really big bass oh there's no bass and then you're moving around that's, that's actually still a problem with stuff like not even direct ones like ten fifteen still a bad idea right mm -hmm. it's still both by fives yes. Yep. 
Actually, if the room is open, the room that, that this was supposed to be in the Oakley room, the reason we moved it was because it was it must have been right next to a mechanical, like a HVAC. Oh. Yeah. Oh, God, it sounded like there was a subwoofer thumping in there. <laughs> it, yeah. I thought somebody had a subwoofer running in the room in the corner doing a test or something when I first walked in. It was it was incredibly loud. I mean, it, unusable, completely unusable. We were going to do the acoustic but tests in there. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah we were going to see. You guys wouldn't have been able to sit in that room this long without no. getting sick. If, oh. you, uh, if you go in that room, if it happens to be open, because we're going to be down right next to it tomorrow on a panel. If it has some open, walk walk in there because you'll walk around the room and you'll find spots where if that you noise goes away anything. completely. Yep. So it gives you kind of a feel for that That's cancellation true. of how the room works because it's it's the room itself, like a string on a guitar. Uh, it's the room itself resonating uh, and supporting different. One more step with this too, because I hear this from a lot of phone calls. Where the guy goes, "Oh, I turn my oscillator on to 100 hertz and I don't hear anything in the mix position." Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what's your point? So. This is physics, guys. What any I listen to any pure tone in a room out of a loudspeaker, I'm gonna walk through natural peaks and valleys. I have to. You can't make that go away. 1K, 2K, 10 hertz, 50 hertz, they're all gonna have peaks and valleys. They have to. The, the, the science or the math of doing this stuff is about making those peaks and valleys musically relate to each other and not pile up on each other. That kind of leads me into why we use you know porous absorbers and other forms of absorbers in a room. If you had a concrete bunker, there would be a very distinct zero in the middle. There wouldn't be any level whatsoever at that frequency. Well, what, what you introduce when you introduce absorption <coughs> is you remove the level from the, from the wall surfaces and it actually comes up in the middle. So it is like adjusting the Q on an equalizer, exactly. you're actually inserting resistance into the resist, resistive circuitry. <laughs> and that's how, that, that's why we treat rooms with different types of base absorbers to remove some of these very distinct valleys where there's no sound whatsoever. Yeah, bass traps don't make you get less bass. Another popular misconception. I have More too much bass. bass trapping because I've got too many bass. I've got not enough bass because I have too many bass traps. Exact opposite. You can't have too many. You can't. Apart from it will require a lot of output from your speakers yes. at some point. But uh, we're talking about <laughs> way too many. You guys yeah. really should come if you're interested in this. The, the panel tomorrow we're going to be talking a lot about that. And I, I can agree more with Fran. As long as you put that bass trapping in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't have too much. Ironically, the biggest fear is that you'll lose too much high end from all those bass traps because they also tend to soak up highs. That's but why we vary between, you know, mm -hmm. Helmholtz type of resonators or porous absorbers or, you know, other panel <laughs> absorbers. We'll mix this up because we do need to make sure that it's an even response throughout the frequency range.